going on, Brian? Howdy, howdy, dorky. I saw a spreadsheet Sunday and was hype. All right, so we're kicking off with a couple of legacy decks this morning. So this is actually a legacy deck that's kind of near and dear to my heart. So Dead Guy Ale is actually the first deck that I ever top aided a legacy open with. So I have a bunch of legacy open top eights from back in the day that people may or may not remember. Top aided with a Loam deck and then the the Mono Red Prison deck a couple of times. And I played this to a top eight finish. I played a played a good good bit of this format. So we'll uh we'll see how was this what do you think of New Kaya for standard? Um New Kaya is interesting because she's she basically looks like a sideboard card, right? Like her text box doesn't have an impact if your opponent's not using the graveyard. So I feel like she's not a main deck card, but she could be a sideboard card. When someone who likes fair decks would someone who likes fair decks would Dead Guy Ale be a good deck to play in Legacy? I mean, this is this is a very fair deck. I don't know. I don't know about good choice, but it is it is a choice. It is a it is a choice that exists for you. Beast and Famines always was kind of the go-to sword in older Dead Guy lists, and the reason for that is because it um, it gives you a sword that pressures the hand of pressures the hand of combo decks, which is nice. I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's true burn player. So I think those comparisons are just completely nonsense. So like scavenging use is an individually powerful threat because it scales up as the game goes long. Whereas uh Kaya doesn't pressure the board. She doesn't block for you. She doesn't trade with a creature in combat. This hand's pretty good. Uh turn one preordain though and again like one of this deck's biggest issues is, especially game one, you're going to get really bad wrong half problem a lot of the time. Um, my opponent uh, is likely playing Storm, and I've got a Toxic Deluge and a Council Judgment here. Just, like, don't have text boxes now. Yep. Yep. Um, hmm. They have a Abrupt Decay in their main deck, too. That's brutal. So, I would just snap the Brainstorm, but, like, they have two of them. This hand's really, really tough to play a discard spell in two, because, like, they've got, they've got Dub's Brainstorm and Dub's, Dub's Ritual. Oso Sav, thank you very much for the brand new Prime support. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a good weekend. Thanks for supporting my content here. Uh, part of me wonders if it's right to just take the Abrupt Decay and hope to stick the Dark Confidant. They might, they might brainstorm the decay away. How does she trade with the creature? Am I not remembering this card's text box? What is, what does this card do that she's like could trade with a creature? Exile, target online pyramid with converted mana cost, one or less. No, that doesn't trade with any meaningful creature. Stop it. Exile, exile a random one drop isn't meaningful. Get out of here. That's some hot nonsense. Hopefully they just like brick out of land here and die. They could also kill us this turn. For those not familiar with Legacy Storm, this Brainstorm could be like kill us afterwards. I don't think this matchup's that bad for us in general, but we're basically starting down a game here because we have Toxic Deluge and Council Judgment in our hand. All right, well, they did brick out of land. That does mean they're going to be able to abrupt decay the Star Confidant though. So they get two more looks at a land here. Slife, thank you for the 12 month resub. I appreciate the entire year of support. Welcome back. I link V, Defender of the Realm, go forth and protect us from Twitch chat.
So if they brick on a land here again, the Bob could hopefully draw us into some disruption to get going here. The opponent's deck is likely Ad Dauzium Tendrils, which tends to go off with the card uh, Past in Flames, although hitting their health total isn't irrelevant because it will allow us to make their Ad Dauziums worse. So this is the only trigger we're going to get out of this Dark Coffin up, most likely, so hopefully it draws us another threat. Liliana, Liliana is a great draw because she, allow, she allows us to turn these other cards in our hand into something useful. The opponent's deck's like also a pseudo critical mass deck. Although we are heading towards the direction of once I plus this Liliana, they're going to have threshold. So we could get into trouble that way. We could we could die next turn. They could be they could be stuck on one land and die. Because remember, like they the rest of their cards are spells. Yep, sweet. Welcome to death. So I must have found a double double LED tutor. Got it. Interesting. Uh, this gets tendrils, and then they will uh, flashback, past in flames, cast a bunch of rituals, and then kill us with tendrils. Or just tutor chain for tendrils, got it. Alright, so we have a bunch of useful cards in our sideboard for this matchup. Get to cut all of these really poopy cards that interact with creatures. go back and forth on deluge in this matchup i'm probably supposed to probably supposed to leave deluge in i guess ad is like less likely to go on the goblin's plan it's probably an okay hedge to leave the deluge in my deck though surgical attraction is like not amazing it's like okay that's good against their past and flames plan thanks rat racer do I have a favorite deck? Uh, no, not really. Just do a quick once over here, make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, I think it's just Deluge out. Glad to be a small contributor to Hoglandia. Keep it up. Thanks for the support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for the 10 months. I'm going to keep this hand because it's like really good if we hit a land. There is a backup batter skull on the board. I'm a big fan of the second batter skull in the fair matchups. So we're going we're gonna to gamble a little bit here. Grab a scrub land. Massacre. That is a that is a good one to know about. For Hoglandia. Thank you for the two month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Should keep me employed here. Alright, well now they're on one land with no cantrip, so. Ding ding ding. Never didn't have it, etc. etc. You're just going to have to get by with the deck list via Stream Decker JW. I'm aware that it covers that stuff up. Um, I think I just Dark Confidant here to start. I think we're pretty unlikely to die through the Surgical Extraction next turn. Famous last words. And I'd rather not, like, I'd like to try and draw, like, a Thought Seizer or Collective Brutality to take the Massacre before I commit the Thalia to the table. The solution is, like, me remembering to change scenes while I'm sideboarding, and that's just not going to happen. There's just too much going on. All right, the old show you batter skull with their confidant. God bless. Um, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and cycle this. Try and find a thought seize. Inquisition's not bad. Uh, 
All right, well, this is actually sweet for us because now, um, now this surgical extraction becomes a discard spell since they have another Cabal Ritual in their hand. What's going on, Bit Ninja? Welcome, welcome. Oh, you know what? I should have fetched uh I should have fetched a Bayou. This is post board and I have got a Deke in my deck. Yeah, ten out of ten should have fetched uh should have fetched a Bayou with that uh that burden catacomb. Mm, you know what I'm probably supposed to surgical this in response to that. Oh, they're just massacring me. It's probably fine. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and take their Cabal Rituals out here. To be fair, we do have Wastelands in our deck. We just don't have Wastelands in play. Alright, what do they got? So they did they did bring in an empty the war ends. They brought in a second Massacre, so they have two Massacre, they have three Abrupt Decay. They have two copies of Pernicious Deed, that's interesting. Their hand is Grim Tutor, Infernal Tutor, Lion's Eye Diamond, Past and Flames. Let's uh, put this up on my other screen here. Alright, Bob's dead, Bob's your uncle, etc, etc. All right. Well, I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess we bought Bob before Thalia here. I think makes a lot of sense. It really is, Gracie. Thank you. So Bob, Bob plus Thalia plus Shambling Ventier should close out pretty quickly. They're gonna need to draw exactly their second copy of Massacre here ASAP. Oh, you know what? I probably should have just surgical their Massacre. Yeah, that was a mistake. I should have just surgical their massacre here. I think I should have just gone full Twitch chat and just surgical the massacre. Caracas is a great pickup here because it means that. Uh, means I can protect the Thalia. Yeah, so my announcement yesterday that I was teasing is that uh, I've signed with the esports team uh, Tempo Storm for 2019. They started they started a Magic the Gathering team that their initial pickups consist of myself, Caleb Durward, and MTG Nerd Girl. No, my we know my opponent has uh, we know my opponent has a second massacre Golgari Great Boy. We looked at their deck with a surgical attraction already. So I'm doing this during their draw steps. That way if they draw the other massacre for their turn, I get it out of their hand. Does that mean less streaming? No, they're they're picking me up for streaming. Is a sponsorship for Magic in general or MTGA only? It's for any streaming that I'm doing. So I'm officially part of their Magic the Gathering team, but it applies to just their their logos. So that scroller on the left side of your screen there with the DX Racer and the Red Bull and the NVIDIA and all that jazz um, is, uh, is going to be present on all of my streams now at that point. Does it mean more streaming? It does, actually. So the, the fact that I knew this sponsorship was coming up is... So I actually got punished here. They, they used my surgical to shuffle their brainstorm, which is rough for us. Um... The fact that I knew this sponsorship was coming up is the reason why I updated my stream schedule to be five days a week as opposed to the four I was doing previously. Because I've known this has been in the works for a little bit here. Hey, Roadkill. Thanks for the 14 months. I really appreciate that. And the tier three resub at that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. I appreciate the continued support. 
Yeah, my so I have a I have a contract with them to stream for minimum number of hours per month, which is uh, so I'll be but which I already I always always clear what their minimum is. So like the contracts are I have to stream for a hundred hours per month, which is something that like I basically always do anyways. That's like not really a big deal. All right, so their hand just like doesn't do a whole lot here, right? I think I just take the ponder. So I mentioned I mentioned this last night. So my plans for modern and legacy is like so since I don't do limited and I don't plan to start doing limited at any time soon, um, I I plan to continue doing some modern and some legacy on Magic Online regardless of you know how much more popular Arena is at least until we get a non rotating format on on Arena. And then, like, once that happens, if that format uh, takes off, we'll probably cut Magic Online down to, like, one or two days a week because I'll be able to get all my variety on Arena, but at least until October. And, like, obviously everything's subject to change and it's going to differ depending on, like, what what actually happens, right? Like, nothing's set in stone, but, like, my, my in-theory plans are to do something like that. I mean, double, double black here. What are they, what are they getting? Just, just like the, the value stay alive tendrils. This is the, the value stay alive. They're hoping, they're hoping Bob kills me. Bob could flip a three drop here. Oh, alrighty then. Shambly boy, let's go. All right, Bob, I need you to not do me dirty for one more turn here. Go, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Is there a difference between gay ale and black white subblade? No, those are used interchangeably, Jackal Girl. Yay, Bob. Yay, Bob. Do you believe the new format will see paper play? Almost certainly. SCG does have a lot of commercials. I agree. Um, so they brought they brought in one empty the Warrens. I I think with the empty I want these toxic deluges in my deck. I think I'm gonna trim these lingering souls. They're a little bit slow and clunky. And bringing in more threats like Godak Teague and Thalia anyways, so it's like trading threats for other threats. My threat density stays high. What am I... Is this a keep? Uh, double discard, no pressure. It's hard to it's hard to pass up like turn one discard spell against Storm. I'm on the draw, which gives me more chances to hit some kind of pressure or permanent base disruption by turn three. I've got a lot of disruption right there. I want a mulligan looking for a threat. I mean this technically has a threat in it, I guess. Womp womp. Hey, Snorix. Thank you very much for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. This hand technically has two pieces of interaction in it, right? Like, Godak, Teague, and Wasteland are both interaction. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, the same principles apply that apply in uh, any any other magic format, right? You need you need disruption plus a clock. It's not the, it's not the disruption that beats the, co the good combo deck. It's the clock. So see if we see if we can legacy them. They have a second land, rats. We could we could die here. Alright, didn't step one, didn't die. Got it. If we manage to dodge dying again on their turn three here, getting to put the Godic Teague into play should bow well for us. Nothing nothing is changing on this stream. 
other than the addition of extra sponsors from from Tempo Storm. Everything everything that we always do here is all all staying the same. The tempo the tempo storm sponsorship is basically all upside. I assume I'm dead here. I assume this cabal therapy is just like to generate storm count. They could be going off with goblins. Their last card is last card infernal tutor. All right, let's grab a bayou. Giant Judge, thank you very much for the brand new Prime support. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. I did I did board in uh, two copies of Toxic Deluge. So, I am saying there's a chance. I need to draw land into Deluge or Deluge into land. All right, there's a land. So, you got two outs next turn. No, Stoneforge, Stoneforge probably would have been... No, actually, yeah, Stoneforge, Stoneforge would have been enough here. They could have, uh... No, it, it wouldn't have been enough because they could flash back the Cabal Therapy and take the Batter Skull. Oh, I do, I do get one more turn, don't I? Yeah, that's true. Wondering why you cut Hostage Taker against Green Blackman range. They just have too much removal. And their creatures cost too much mana. They have a lot of removal and their creatures cost a lot of mana. So I'm not going to play the Thalia out here. And the reason for this is because um, if I play the Thalia, I then can't cast Toxic Deluge next turn. So. This is just like the unfortunate reality of like playing against Storm. Is that like we were on the draw. I didn't have a piece of one mana discard. So like they were able to combo before I was able to play a piece of two mana disruption. Just like a two mana, two mana hate bears, just like too slow if you don't have a turn one discard spell, which is like part of the reason to like speculatively keep the thought seize hand that I had because like a, a piece of one mana discard is kind of a premium in a matchup like this. McBinney, thank you for the seven month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Of course, Mardu Control is going to come with a standard legal planeswalker. Nope. Yeah, if the if the the team stuff was gonna make me have to drastically change how I do things around here, um, it wouldn't it wouldn't be something that I'd be doing. So like, while um, obviously like the sponsorship comes with dollars attached to it, like while the bulk of my income, I'm not you're not gonna hear me stop saying thanks for keeping me employed here because like the bulk of my income is still subscribers, like that's 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 not changing. It's not, it's not that much money. These folks, these folks picked up like myself and Caleb and Nerd Girl because we're folks who are, who have promoted ourselves and built communities and like, they understand that we know what's best for us. Basically, basically the only thing that changes for me with the sponsorship in terms of like what I do in my day to day here is that moving forward, any future sponsors that I pick up, I just need to run past to make sure they're not in direct conflict with sponsors that they're running because you can't like represent, you know, two, two things of the same, the same style thing at the same time, right? That just like sends mixed messages and would make both sponsors unhappy. Can you, can you have four bathrooms out? Well, the new house we're closing on Thursday does actually have four bathrooms in it. Thinking about Arena, you think this will give me my competitive fix? I love Arena. It's so good. It's just like, it's di digital magic that's good in a way I just honestly never thought digital magic could be good. Yeah, we'll only be promoting promoting good graphics cards on, on the stream. Honestly, even before we had the, before we had the Tempo Storm sponsorship that came with Nvidia, I wouldn't have accepted an ATI sponsorship, AMD, whatever it's called. There's a there's an i7 and an NVIDIA GTX 1080 1080 GTX in my system. 
And my and my system upstairs, my old my previous streaming system before I upgraded this one has a 1060 and uh, and an i7 in it. Thanks, Simon. I appreciate it. Double dismember. Short of postures is really funny against Death Shadow, huh? I think I'm gonna take their ponder here. How do you feel about partnering with Raynad? So this is, there's the magic community is really weird to me. The magic community is really super, what I would describe as socially progressive in almost every way possible, except when it comes to forgiveness and giving people extra chances. And like another part of it is like, it, and, and not even just giving people second chance, but just like understanding that people can like grow and change as people. Like if everybody in the world only judged me based on who I was at 20, you know, six or seven years ago for the rest of my life, I'd never be able to get anywhere. Most of us would never be able to get anywhere in life. Like it would just be like, well, well, we're screwed forever because because when I was 20, I was kind of a dickhead. And it's just like, well, well, shoot. That's true. 20 year old Jeff did have hair. So it wasn't, it wasn't all downside. He had, he had some stuff going for him. I think it has to do with how, I mean, it's not even just Raynad. It's just like any, anybody who's ever done it that like, if they all, if they ever come back, it's just like people, people flip on them. Raynad was uh, DQ'd from an event uh, for having a card in his sealed that wasn't in the sealed. I believe there's a bunch of threads about it. And then he said, he said it was, it was just, he wrote down the wrong thing or something or other, but it was a DQ at the time. It might still be a DQ. I don't actually know the, the rules on that because I don't play limited. I just think I just think it's really weird that like the magic community there's people in the magic community that'll be like that'll like will literally play with people that are like literal criminals that like have like felony records and stuff like that, but like people who cheated previously in magic get ostracized. It's like, whoa, what which is it? Like you believe people can reform and be better and come back, or like once you do something stupid, you're branded as having done something stupid forever. Pick one. Like don't don't waffle in the middle. Choose a choose a side. So they've got Dismember, Death Shadow, Force of Will, and then two cards I don't know at the moment. This seems pretty good for us. Council's Judgment's not a bad pickup. Wasteland, is that a good one? Get Legacied. 
Welcome to Thunderdome. Enjoy your stay. No, my opponent's deck almost certainly plays the, the card Daze in it, so I have zero desire to run my Batter Soul into a Daze there. This Toxic Deluge is going to be real bad in this matchup, so let's start by binning that. This is probably Lights Out at this point. I'm kind of surprised they don't have a blue card in their hand. Like, I know they had a Forcible at some point, so this probably can allow me the read that they don't have, uh... They don't have a blue card in their hand to go with this Force. Yeah, this is definitely a second Batter Skull matchup. Most of, most of the fair matchups are second Batter Skull matchups. Listen, Bob has nothing but our best interests at heart, okay? Don't don't slander Dark Confidant's good name, okay? He's doing he's doing the best he can over here. Old, old shambles here. Shambling vent shambling vents and I we go we go way back. He's my boy he's my boy. Alright, so Thalia seems okay here. Council judgment seems good. Uh Kai is probably not good enough. Second Batter Skull is fine. I think Gideon's fine. Toxic Deluge doesn't seem fantastic. Collected Brutality is kind of slow and clunky. Doesn't kill anything meaningful out of their deck. Lingering Souls is great because it blocks. Gideon of the Trials, Lily of available. Both great. LA's Endicar might just be too much mana. I don't think this is a Rest in Peace matchup. They're a Gurmag Angler deck, but that's like their only graveyard resource. I think bringing in Rip just to hit Gurmag Angler is a little bit narrow. Wasteland, Wasteland is a very miserable Magic the Gathering card. What is going on? My opponent and I both showed up with modern decks. This hand's great. Turn one discard spell, turn two two mana creature. God bless. Do the gen things. What do you bring it in versus outside of reanimator and dredge? So this deck, because you have so many discard spells in this deck, you actually board in surgical in most of your combo matchups. Because for example, against like sneak and show, you can like thought seize their sneak attack or their show and tell and then surgical it out. And if you can surgical sneak attack in this deck, like against Sneak and Show, their show and tells are a lot less scary because you can just like edict them off of it. Cycle, Street Wraith, play Wasteland. So normally this deck's pretty resistant to Wasteland, but this hand is not great against it. This deck's got a bunch of fetch lands and six basics in it. And we're only two colors. We're like 2.5 colors, like 2.25 colors. I've got a Bayou and some Teagues in the board. What are you, what are you working with over there? Is going to be a Thoughtseize or a Hymn to Torok? It's, yeah, this is literally like a modern legal hand with just like a better Goblet Shrine, right? What did they keep? They boarded in Extrapate? What? Uh, I think I just take their Force of Will here, right? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I just take their Force. I 
I wonder if they clicked keep by mistake. I don't know why there's an extra paint in their deck. Post board. Talking talking about surgical being the most overboarded card. Not quite sure why extra paint isn't against me. Some what someday I really wish there could just be justice in the world. Did they mulligan this game? No, they kept they kept seven. They kept seven street wraith no colored source. Fantastic. So they have Brainstorm, Brainstorm, Extirpate, Stubborn Denial, Delver. I think I'm just going to go ahead and play Stoneforge Mystic here. They did Mulligan. They have an Extirpate. That's true. I think Force of Will and Wasteland are not cards that I want in Modern. This is this is a miserable magic card that creates incredibly high variance games of Magic the Gathering. It's one of my least favorite parts of Legacy. This card, in my opinion, negates all of the variance reduction that cantrips like Brainstorm and Ponder introduce because it creates so many non-games of Magic. So the reasoning behind playing Stoneforge over the other two drops, because I care if Stoneforge dies the least. Also, Stoneforge has a pretty big upside if it lives. Like, I know their hand right now doesn't have any answers to the Stoneforge Mystic. So, like, if the Stoneforge lives and I get Batterskull into play, that's, like, really good for me. Thanks, Megas. The forced pitching Delver. Like, that seems like a win for me. So their hand is Brainstorm, Extra Paid, Stubborn Denial, maybe... I think Daze could probably be fine. A soft counter like Daze is whatever. Daze would... You, you got me. Daze would be, like, good in... It would be an upgrade for, like, gr modern Death Shadow. But, like, modern Death Shadow, like, isn't a tier 1 deck, really. It's, like, a fine deck, but it's not amazing. Nobody's writing home about it. What's going on, Captain Harris? We are... We, we're going to play a couple of Legacy Leagues to start, but we are going to get to modern later today. I, re I really don't think days would be too good in modern. I think that's probably not true. Let's fetch another basic swamp here. I think I'm actually going to play... Do I play this Dahlia out? You have Brainstorm, Stub. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just play Thalia out here. Dubs, Bob, sign me up. This might be, this might be a little aggressive. Opponent just turned us into a modern deck. They took away our Stone Forge mistakes. <laughs> I mean, I have, I have this Lingering Souls in my hand, so like... Greatness, it says greatness at any cost, chat. Not not at some cost, at at any cost. Yeah, I probably should have played Shambling Vent and just one Bob here. They'll show me the Stubborn Denial that we already know about. Let's see if they hit a land here. What do you think of Sylvan Scrying and Amulet Titan? I think Sylvan Scrying is probably worse than just playing, um, what's it, Adventurous Impulse is a card that that archetype's played before. Definitely don't mind Adventurous Impulse as a card. Well, I mean, I'm going to count this as a victory. Bob, Bob didn't hurt us. 
And uh, we get to play Shambles plus Lingering Souls. So we're probably going to win this game. They didn't block, and they also didn't attack. Seems like a mistake on their part. Opponents made some strange plays this game. They might be newer to Legacy, or their deck at the very least. This is the greatest game of modern I've never seen. What's going on, Jbot? Thanks for the 10 months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. What about Souls and Flashback? Thalia is symmetrical. So, Thalia says I can't play and Flashback Souls. Yeah, whenever whenever I hear people say they want like Days Force Wasteland in, in Modern, I'm like, you just want to play Legacy. You just want more people to play it with. Congrats on the esports stuff. Can we get a copy of Esper Amulet or Green Red Frenzy in the queue? Definitely Full Metal. Thank you for the bits. I appreciate it. KCI comboing off at SCG stream, so I guess I'll come here and watch some interactive magic. <laughs> I was so happy when someone linked me the screenshot of the Stoneforge mistake emotes in chat when KCI was comboing. It's quite fantastic. Thanks for dropping in today, folks. Remember, if you want to watch, keep up with the... Um, if you want to keep up with the SCG tournaments or the Grand Prix and still watch my stuff today that multi-twitch is a great thing. Multi-twitch.com or multi-twitch, is it multi-twitch.tv? Yeah, multi-twitch.tv forward slash two different usernames and you can watch two multiple Twitch streams very easily at the same time on your computer. Definitely McCarver. So it puts, if you, the multi-stream website puts um, both the streams in the same browser tab for you and lets you easily flip back and forth between them or watch them both simultaneously. I think this is a keep. We're going to be like super dead if my opponent's playing a combo deck, but this is like reasonable match of the gathering cards. Bottom a second, Liliana here. If you've never heard of multi twitch before, it's great. Yeah, multi multi twitch can run lots of streams at the same time. You can keep putting forward slashes and like put more and more twitch names in there. The elves matchup is really bad for this deck. Thankfully, I do have one of my two main deck toxic deluges in my opener. So maybe we have a chance. The God the God Teague Splash actually really helps this matchup. Wild for when he just for when two Elvish Visionaries is not enough, huh? Take a Wirewood Symbiote here because that protects their Elves from Sweepers. Visionary. Vision is scary. Start a revolution. Pollute in the airwaves. Do -do, do 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 Hopefully they play Dryad Arbor this turn and then I get to clear their board. They are not. They are playing Wirewood Symbiote. Unfortunate. So, hoping to draw a piece of spot removal to kill this. We're going to cast this. So this way I can play Liliana and down tick her next turn. Honestly, it might even be right just like Liliana down tick this turn. So, this is kind of an engine. So, Wirewood Symbiote lets them return an elf to their hand every turn. So, they get to like pick this visionary back up and replay it over and over and over again. So they're basically going to be drawing two cards a turn for the rest of the game until I die. And that's the reason why I didn't Toxic Deluge there, because Deluge would have effectively only killed these two. Maybe I was supposed to, and that's just enough. So 
Sorry, draw three cards a turn because they can bounce this on their turn. Yeah, maybe I think I was wrong and I should have just pulled the trigger on this Daily Age. I don't know. We're, we're pretty dead regardless. I'm just going to concede and not show them what I'm doing. They probably know, but we're not winning this game. All right, Teague, Containment Priest. Cut these poopy Lilianas. Gideon's kind of mediocre, too. None of these other cards really have text, right? Backup Batter Skull is not useful here. Thank you for freeing up my third monitor. I got you. They do, they do in fact have many of the other cards. Yeah, I definitely, looking, looking back and thinking on it more, I should have just deluged the, the symbiote and the elf if I wanted to have a chance there. Because I didn't, I was just dead, but if I, I may, I maybe had a small chance if I deluged there and then drew well. Thirteen months complaining about demented whispers. It, Hex is dead. You could you could move on, mage. Thanks for the thirteen months. Uh, this hand probably doesn't do enough, right? Bob, Bob on the play is pretty hard to pass up. This hand is much better. Yeah, depending on legacy, legacy sometimes has strong local scenes. But like, there's like, it's just like factually correct that legacy is like not particularly popular and it can't go anywhere. Like, there's a finite number of reserved list staples and they get more expensive every year, more get damaged, more get lost, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's just just the facts about the format. I think I was gonna escalate brutality here. Probably ditch the swamp. Kill this. Take a peek at their hand. Take the glimpse of nature. God bless. They have uh, birch lore, heritage, wirewood symbiote in hand. I mean, just like it, it literally can't grow past a certain point because the cards physically don't exist for it to be able to grow. There's a there's a very there's a very real finite ceiling on like where it can grow to. Please cast natural order. It's just like the natural hoof. It's like Drew Cradle, like Drew the Natural Hoof. That's such a bad beat. I guess I guess I'm not dead. They're on they're on zero cards. I get to plow this in response and take four. It's fine. We're fine. Ignore me. We're fine. It's okay. It was like not ideal, but we're fine. All right, so let's wasteland you off of that. I'm gonna go ahead and play this Tide Hollow Sculler while they guaranteed still have a, uh, while they guaranteed have a spell in their hand. This is my 2-2, two -two, which is a king among men on this board. All right, so wait on Stoneforge Mystic at this point, or an Umazawa's GTA. Yep. I 
Wow, they're going to draw a few cards here. They get uh, Bounce Heritage Druid, Untap Dryad Arbor, Bounce Heritage Druid, Untap Dryad Arbor. So they get to draw like three cards here. Woof. <laughs> oh, their draws have been so good. Are you is that you responding to all those folks Wraith BK? My favorite are all the people that have just like literally never played with Splinter Twin before that were commenting on it. No, I really I really don't don't I'm really not a huge fan of modern in its current state. Modern modern just gotten incredibly more linear and more degenerate as the format's gone on. This current this current standard format is the best format of magic I've ever played. It's very, very good. I don't think that's uh, skilled panda. Like I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. That's that's just crap. Like it's. I talked about how the matchup is hard and we have tools and just like saying, well, it doesn't matter. Like commenting on the fact that they drew well isn't being upset. It's just like stating a fact, right? Like the draws that they've had so far have been good. And like that's okay. I can say that and just be like, this is sometimes people draw. We draw well all the time on this stream, right? It's like part of magic, but like. They went from, like, nothing into the Crater Hoof Hit Me for 8 into, like, a Glimpse. And, like, sure, they have a lot of payoffs, but, like, we already took one of their Glimpses, and this covers the rest of their payoffs pretty well. So it feels, feels a little bit bad. Nettle Sentinel, sure. That's going to get uh, Swords to Plowshares here, probably. Rex Sage kills my Titan Hollow Skuller. That's unfortunate. Oh, and I can't I can't even plow this reasonably, right? Because they have Wirewood Symbiotes. So by that I mean we'll plow a Wirewood Symbiote. Like even even GTA is not really good enough here because the Wirewood Symbiotes just like block and bounce their creatures and they have Reclamation Sage that they can replay over and over and over again. I mean, if you look hard enough, you're going to find someone that hates every every standard format that exists. The only thing the only thing Magic players like more than playing Magic is complaining about Magic. I think I just have to. I think I just have to like put a second bob into play here and hope that these are gonna be good enough. I need to I need to just like hit a critical mass of cards. They're gonna like be wide enough here soon that there's gonna be attacking me and putting a second bob into play gives me something to like trade in combat. So they could just like sit tight and hope the bobs kill me. That's definitely a thing. Uh, I'm pretty dead at this point. Just gonna go ahead and pack it in and move on. When they glimpsed earlier, could we have Swords the Dryad Arbor? Did I have mana? Did I have mana and swords available then? I honestly don't remember. Deluge, Deluge doesn't matter, Fedged. I don't I don't think I had the plow. If I had the plow, I definitely would have. If I didn't like go back in time and like shame me, but I'm pretty sure I didn't have the plow in hand. Like, even if I draw Deluge at that point, the Deluge literally doesn't do anything because, like, the Symbiotes mean they're going to draw a bunch of cards with their Elvish Visionary. And then um, when I do actually Deluge, they're going to pick up two more Elves and only lose the Symbiotes and then have, like, a handful of stuff to, like, my basically nothing. Okay, so we're playing against Red Black Reanimator. I'm going to play on Marsh Flats and Pass since they revealed Chance they're on one here. Oh, we're playing against Manalist Dredge? Is that what this is? I 
is is in fact Manalist Dredge. Can I beat Manalist Dredge game one, or do I just concede? I might I might just concede. Welcome to Legacy. Enjoy your stay. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and concede. I'll help them know how to sideboard. Not, not without a batter skull coming up anytime soon. Like anything, anything close to a reasonable draw there is going to destroy us. Happy six months. Glad to be catching a live one. Odd ends. Thanks for the half of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. <laughs> we have a we have a lot of cards that get to commit when we queue into the dredge matchup. That much that much is true. Johnny Hot Pie, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine with that. So, um, Manalist Dredge is incapable of beating most of these cards here that I'm boarding in. I guess they could beat Surgical. Usually they don't beat Thalia or I would like to play second. You want to play second against Manalist Dredge because um, they... They literally have to keep any hand. I think I'm supposed to mulligan this. So turn one discard's actually pretty good in this matchup because it like forces your opponent to mulligan basically to like take another turn off. <laughs> I don't think Twitch offers a way to pay it all up front. You can set it to auto renew though. Thanks, Canon. I appreciate it. I mean, that's the correct way to do it, right, Mage? Just like ignore it, move on with your life. Uh, turn one discard spell would have been marginally better, but yeah, this, uh, this seems pretty good. Had, had one of my sideboard cards in it. This format's so stupid. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy enjoying the magic chat? Are you, how are we, how are we enjoying the magic the gathering chat? Welcome, welcome to Thunderdome. <laughs> Going to game three here. One spell's been cast. The old, the old one spell's been cast. Going to game three. I just want you to know that when legacy players get up on their high horses and like try and cr tra trash talk modern, you should just like let them know that their format's not any better. Is this keepable? Thalia's like pretty good in this matchup. She makes it so they can't flashback any of their stuff. Which is like decent. Like Thalia, Thalia into Stoneforge Mystic probably wins the game. I think Thalia into Stoneforge Mystic wins the game, right? Like if they don't, if they can't cast spells, all they could do is Nether Shadow and Icarid me, right? They they can't even they can't even sacrifice things. Or they can't even sacrifice things to like get a bunch of zombies out. Like they they literally can't take Thalia off the table. Sure, Icarid sacks itself, but that doesn't beat Stoneforge Mystic. Like Batter Skull, Batter Skull beats Icarid. Like, I definitely have better sixes than this, but, like, I don't know that my average six or five is, like, better than turn two Thalia. Turn two Thalia, turn three Stoneforge Mystic, turn four Batter Skull. 
Uh, Manalist Dredge can't turn one U. Like, this is, this is basically the entire game. The entire game is this mulligan decision. It's, is Thalia into turn four Batter Skull good enough? Do some of them play Amalgams? I guess some of them play Amalgams because they do play Force of Will on occasion. I guess turn one discard's really good too. I'm going to try and take a mulligan. This hand's great. You, you keep your hand. Inquisition's a little bit risky in this matchup because they could only have dredgers that cost three or less, but I'm definitely going to cast Inquisition here. I think that's fine, probably. This could, like, spot check for a, uh, oh, oh, read. All right, so I am going to cast Inquisition here because Inquisition clears out the Chancellors, so that way next turn Rest in Peace can resolve because these both trigger on the first spell I cast. You, you have to take a card with the Inquisition. You do, you do, in fact, have to take a legal target. All right, do you have Force of Will? You do not. Go. <clears throat> and that's pretty unlucky. Surgical doesn't have a text box. Does Manalish Dredge run Force? I believe they do sometimes. I'm not 100% on that. Does it even matter what I take here? I don't think it does, right? Yeah, the addition, the addition of prized amalgam allowed Dredge to start playing Force of Will if they wanted to. Slow ride, take it easy. Do, 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 do. I have no idea how the opponent wins this game. Oh, yeah, some play Disrupting Shoal as well. Dredge versus KCI. Welcome to Modern. Like, the, the reason why, in my opinion, the reason why a lot of people like Modern currently is because a lot of people realistically don't play competitive Modern at their local game store. They play what's effectively casual magic with Modern legal sets because people aren't showing up playing to win. They're showing up to just have a good time and there aren't a representative proportion of KCIs and Trons and all the other really obnoxious things that make Modern pretty miserable a lot of the time for most people. And don't get me wrong, like if you enjoy playing Modern at your local game store, you can and should enjoy it. I'm just saying that like what you're playing at your local game store is probably going to be drastically different than what you would play if you went to like a Star City Games Open or a Grand Prix, especially if you're doing well. Like, remember, at the end of the day, Magic's a game you should ultimately be playing to have fun. So, like, regardless of what you're playing and how you're playing it, if you're having a good time, like, that's good, that's important, that's what matters. Man. This was an incredibly interesting match of Magic the Gathering, wouldn't you say, chat? In indubitably. It's worth noting too, like we talked about this entire match being decided by our mulligan decision. Like if I'd have kept the first hand, we'd have lost this game. Like the, the chancellors of the annex that got exiled on one would have beaten us for sure.
All right, hopefully we can win the last one. Get our get our twelve dollars back. I've been playing Magic for 15 years. Practiced KCI the other day for the first time. It was fun to learn. Playing against an actual playing against an opponent was hands down the worst experience in my Magic playing years. Yep. Yep. All right, because Magic Online is online gambling, we uh. We're playing for, if we win this next match, we get $14. If we lose this next match, we get nothing. So let's hopefully, hopefully win. Thanks to my wonderful new Tempo Storm, Storm sponsorship slash affiliation, I still get to eat lunch even if we don't win though. So that's, that's nice, you know? You know, we don't lose our shirt anymore, which is good because taking my shirt off is against the rules of Twitch. Hey, I mean, this is a hand. What does the new sponsor, the new sponsor entail? The new sponsor entails extra resources for myself, both uh, monetary and extra things like help get stuff done for my stream, as well as, um, well, this, hand, this hand's usually pretty good against turn one basic planes. So let's see how this goes. Hopefully they're playing death in Texas. Looks like a control deck. Hoping to not get spell pierced here so we can stick this Liliana out of the veil. I'm gonna inquisition them actually. Daddy, do you have any butter sandwich cookies down here? Butter sandwich cookies? I I do think I, in fact, have butter sandwich cookies over here, Dee. <laughs> Are these what you want? <laughs> Come on, let's go upstairs. Are you super excited that there's butter sandwich cookies, fat boy? Well, why, why didn't I eat some yet, Daddy? Why not open yet, Daddy? Why would... <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Why are you not eat them, Daddy? <laughs> Sorry. Daddy, let's what, go what, what? So someone asked why I didn't play the Shambling Vent. I didn't play the Shambling Vent because I knew they had Back to Basics in their hand. So like playing the Shambling Vent just like didn't accomplish anything. So I'm just gonna discard the Shambling Vent. So this will lay onto the veil here. So they discarded Terminus, they played that, they played the Delta. So they have Strand, Tundra, and then one card I don't know. Sorry, Declan, Declan finished his stash of peanut butter cookies upstairs. Had to come down here and raid my own. Spell snare, sure. So we'll fetch our fifth basic here. Ah, ah, ah. Guess this. So they have Tundra and then one card I don't know. Trigger. They have uh, Tefri here. A lot of these decks play one copy of Tefri. Snap, Council's Judgment. Okay, makes a lot of sense. I assume we're gonna lose Lily out of the Veil here. Uh, their last card is Tundra. So I'm not going to play this Inquisition. So remember, you don't have to fire off your discard spells ASAP, especially when you're in positions like this. It's often right to wait to play your Inquisition until you're like trying to resolve a spell, like check for a spell pierce or fluster storm or something like that, or spell snare, snapcaster mage, etc. So looking to draw more threats here. Even though their equipments are just good, sort of fire and ice, or sort of fire feast and famine, Umazawa's GTA, etc. So this is definitely a Definitely a matchup where we want to bring in our second copy of um, our second copy of Batterskull. All right, now I'm going to spot check for a Snapcaster Mage or a Spell Snare here. 
They have Force of Will. This does give my opponent a window to kill my batter skull, but I think that's fine. Purchasing tempo storm stuff like that is good for me, McCarver. It is supporting supporting this monster supports my stuff. I agree. I agree. Their logos are great, by the way. Well, now they've drawn. Now they've drawn up to five cards. So I assume the little germ that could here is not going to quite be enough to beat the the draw five, but we'll see. We'll we'll see. Uh, I'm just going to try and be aggressive here. I think being aggressive is my route to victory. All right. Well, they don't have a sword to plow shares, so that's good. Let's get force of willed here. Force pitching Tefri. All right, so... They pitch Tefri, so they must have a Jace. Second Tefri, sure. See, Snapcaster Mage here, probably. Snap, snap, plumager. Or just sword supposters, I suppose. Yeah, Tefri plus back to basics is kind of cute. All right. I mean, if they, if they brick off here, we could maybe be okay. Oh, I guess, I guess they can just Tefri, they can Tefri tuck the tight hollow, huh? That's, that's like the inverse of a brick. This matchup is pretty tough for us. Game one, especially. I think I'd rather this get forced or counterspelled. All right. I mean, we were we were kind of in that game for a hot second, and then they played. They drew all four of their accumulate knowledges. Things things happen. Cut these sword supply shares. Cut these toxic deluges. Need two more, two more cuts here. GTA is probably not good enough. I think Brutality is pretty good. I like having some small pieces of spot removal. Thalia is actually not amazing here. Like, so one of the things you have to keep in mind with Thalia, while like Thalia has a lot of the hits that are, are good against my opponent's deck, like I'm boarding in two four mana Planeswalkers. So like Thalia is symmetrical. So this deck isn't like death and taxes and that like Thalia is almost always all upside. Thalia does have an impact on the magic that we're playing as well. Need to kind of be kind of be conscious of that while we do our thing. Generally, generally she usually comes in in the combo matchups where there she's gonna be much better against them than she's against us. You know, I think I'm actually gonna shift to modern after this. I'm gonna leave Mardu control for another day. I think. Had had enough enough legacy for the morning, I think. I've done done a lot of this format recently. A 
lead on Bayou Inquisition here. I think there's a pretty good chance that back to basics boards out for them. And after they saw us on five basics, need the Bayou for Matik here. Double ponder. Yeah, Flusterstorm Strange, I agree. I saw your Thousand Year Storm picture, Rad. That's great. They probably think I have him. Okay, that's fair. Do I take a Ponder or do I take a Plow? Probably supposed to just take the Plow, right? I think it's take the Plow, play Stoneforge, grab Sword. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's the line. I always love when people come into chat and tell me what I enjoy and don't enjoy. They're like, man, Jeff, why do you why do you play Legacy and Modern if you don't like it? If I didn't like these formats, I wouldn't play them. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of standard decks in my queue. I'd stop I'd stop taking money to play these formats because there's people that also pay me to play standard. I like playing a variety of magic formats. Do I like every game and interaction in these formats? No, definitely not. I'm not, it's not, I'm not salty at all. I love how, I love how when you speak, when you speak your mind and you're honest about things, magic players are just like, man, <laughs> he's so salty. He's upset about everything. <laughs> the only thing I'm salty about is winkers in chat. I ain't salty about the magic formats. It's like there's people in the world that think like and I don't I don't I don't know where their what their what their logic is based in. It just has to not be any logic, right? Like they think that like in order for you to enjoy parts of something, you have to enjoy all of it. So like if you don't enjoy every bit of magic that a format produces, you can't possibly enjoy the format, right? Like if you don't like everything about legacy, obviously you like nothing. If you don't like every part of modern, you, you have to like none of it. Yes, what Wildfeather said exactly hits the nail on the head. You can criticize something that you love. In fact, people who are more invested in things are generally more likely to criticize them because they, they have more invested and want it to do better. Completely, completely agree with that sentiment. All right, let's just like, just like leverage our advantage here and just like get all our stuff into play. Yes, I agree, Brian. Humans are prone to all or nothing and complexity scares people. Also agree with that as a spin. Those people should have their parents. They love them every moment of raising them. I mean, usually you love your children unconditionally, right? That's it. I always love my children, but I don't always like them. They're they're deck they're turds sometimes, you know. When De when Declan jumps on my head at five thirty in the morning because he's awake and wants me to be awake, not a huge fan of Declan at that moment, but I still love him. What's going on, Zigzil? Thanks for the seven month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. No, Declan is my is my three year old. Who has who has very intelligently deduced that by jumping on me in the morning is the best way to get me to actually wake up. Yeah, I agree, Mike Minds. It's less logic and more a cognitive shortcut to reduce everything to a binary, binary, black or white, good or bad. Completely, completely agree.
Do I want to thought seize on one here? I don't think I do. I think there's very little reason to like play this out directly into like a spell piercer or fluster storm. So now let's Inquisition, which will likely get counterspelled, and then follow it up with a Thought Seize, which should resolve. Be a good replacement for Fine Finality in the Jundiner's decks deck. Uh, Ritual is set, I guess. I don't know. It depends on what you want the slot to do. Like, Fine Finality is good because it's a split card that's good against both. It's a split card that's good against... Fine Finale is good against aggro and control. So, like, any other card you put in that slot is only going to be good against one or the other. Every time I beat a Just Guy Control player at my LGS, they, they say burn requires actual factual zero skill. You should probably look them in the eyes and ask them... Uh, what part of their life is going so poorly that they feel the need to belittle someone playing a children's card game? You should you should feel bad for those people. Generally, generally speaking, people who feel the need to degrade other people like that, especially in things that ultimately don't matter, like Magic the Gathering, are people who are coming from a place that's not very good in their lives. A lot, of, a lot of hostility other people put out into the world comes from the fact that they're not happy with something with themselves. And takes by cookies, that's true. Yeah, yeah, Tempest Storm added a Magic the Gathering team. So, myself, Caleb Durward, and MTG Nerd Girl are their, their inaugural Magic the Gathering team. Well, you know, and this is in the in the realm of Magic the Gathering is nothing but gambling. Um, we are going to lose this game where we are playing for $14 because we actually just haven't drawn a spell this game. That's honestly the part I like the least about playing Legacy on Magic Online is that at least with Modern, you can gamble only a little bit. With Legacy, you're obligated to gamble a very significant amount and just like losing $14 an hour just like sucks. Johnny Pot Pie with the sub gift to Roonies. I appreciate that, welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. And just to like put a quantification with that, like people always say, well, you're gambling with other people's money, Jeff, because like they paid to put the deck in the queue. And like, while that's true, I could also gamble with other people's money in things that cost me less, right? So I get to keep more of it. So it's still, it still costs me money regardless of how you look at it. And no, no friendlies for legacy is miserable. Completely, completely concur. All right, do you have two plows? All right, they only have one plow here. So that means they're gonna have to flash in Snapcaster Mage if they want to, uh, if they want to keep their Jace alive. I guess they could have a Terminus on top of their deck. And they have Terminus on top of their deck here. We'll just concede. Flush our money down the toilet. Sweet. Okay. So you're saying there's a chance. This Shambling vent has been great this league, by the way. You guys like pour one out for my boy Shambles. Yes, Gabriel Paints. That's actually part of the reason why I kicked the cost up. Uh, I know this is this is game three. It's unfortunate. So hoping to draw a discard spell here so I can take their sword supplashers and then kill Jace with the uh with the shambling van. All right, so this means that they're forced to plow the Shambling Vent to keep the Jace alive. And then maybe if this Dark Confidant can untap, we can have a chance. 
The scary part here is like my opponents miss land drops this game, which means that like their hand is currently three spells, which sucks for us. Many more great months ahead. Howls, thank you for the three month resub. I appreciate that. Thanks for the quarter of a year. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. That's true. That's true. We've taken we've taken most of the most of the most of the lands out of our deck at this point. So there are only three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's only ten lands left in forty-one cards. So we're we're seventy we're over seventy-five percent to draw spells from here on out. They do have a spell pierce in their hand, which is something I need to be aware of while I'm while I'm doing stuff here. All right, so I'm actually gonna lead on the batter skull because the tight hollow skuller can't get spell pierced. So yeah, it feels feels a little bit backward to play our threat before we check for a way to interact with it, but this one can't get spell pierced, and this one can. No, today's just going to be just going to be legacy and modern. Tomorrow is going to be all standard. My body's ready to get terminist. They're only through they're through two of them. All right, no terminus. They just, they just had active Jace for so long. Well, they put a card. They put a card in the bottom of my deck, so like that's uh that's a good sign for us. Means I have a chance to draw a good spell here. Yep. <sighs> Thanks, Bradleyness. Well, their hand's bad. Unfortunately, my hand does not exist. In. Yeah, they showed up. They showed up playing all the good cards, Burgle. Burgle, we actually you'll appreciate this one, Burgle. We we beat miracles last night with just guy stone blade because my opponent literally ran out of win conditions they had they had zero cards in their deck and couldn't win the game these these are the types of games people thought were going to be the norm in modern there's here's their third terminus Terminus here isn't isn't terrible for us. We get to double double souls here. If we can dodge the fourth sweeper, we might be okay. All right. Well, that tells us they don't currently have the fourth sweeper, so that's good for us. They are, however, digging for it. And they can brainstorm into it and just play a six mana terminus here if they'd like. They just unsummon my token. That bodes well for me. Driving in my car, beep beep. <sighs> needed uh, needed to hit some spells sooner. Is there a plan for the day the new set releases? Yeah, I'm playing a bunch of standard. The uh, January 16th, I believe it is, will be the pre-release day that the streamers get to play with a bunch of cards before everybody else gets them. And we'll be doing all standard that day. So the set releases for everyone on Magic Arena on the 17th. And it releases for, there's a special streamer day on the 16th before that. Yeah, I agree. Bat Nexus looks really good. All right. 
We're done now. Power couple Jeffrey is here. Um, Legacy. We came. We played some things that were kind of games of magic where people conceded to rest in pieces. And got chased out of the game while flooding and dying. We uh, we took we took twelve dollars and we set it on fire. You know, you know the use. Uh, hashtag hashtag online gambling. All right, let's play some modern. Let's play, let's play some elves. Let's text some people. I haven't I haven't fully decided if I'm going to continue accepting legacy donation decks yet, but I think I'm currently leaning towards no. I think the I think the mix of both just like the. Or maybe, maybe I just like do them for a minimum of 50. I might kick them for a minimum of 50. I actually, I don't mind playing Legacy too much as a format, but just like the fact that like we, a lot of the decks that get submitted are kind of bruised, which means we're more likely to like two, three with them, which means I'm likely to lose $12 playing them. It means I probably just need to take in a higher, a higher fee. I think, I think that might be the case. Just like tier three subs can't submit Legacy decks, just do a minimum of 50. It's probably what it is. The problem with vintage is that 